Hi everybody, Jorge Rivera here with the Healing and Justice Center, and this is your Tenant Tip Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started by doing our typical grounding exercises so that we can be centered and present and absorb all of the information in an emotionally regu regulated state. So I'm going to invite you to take a few deep breaths, breathing deep into your diaphragm. Just imagine that there's a balloon inside your stomach and that you're just inflating the balloon with every deep breath. And then you're going to use your stomach muscles to deflate the balloon with every exhale, okay? So we're going to breathe in, inflating the balloon, and then exhaling, pushing it out, deep breath in, pushing out, one last one, and then out. Awesome, thank you so much for joining. Again, we do this so that we can get regulated. We deal with a lot of stressful events as tenants, and a lot of these tips are actually dealing with some stressful events. So it's very important that you regulate yourself and you take care of yourself during tough times. So let's get to your Tenant Tip Tuesday. All right, uh, so this is your Tenant Tip Tuesday. This is going to be part two of different types of rental notices. We're going to be dealing with two very specific types of notices, the three-day notices and the 24-hour notices to enter. So three-day notices, let's start with those. Those come in three different kinds. First, you have your three-day notice to pay or quit. Usually, if there is a balance left over on something that you owe, typically for rent, you might be issued a three-day notice to pay or quit. So this is basically notifying you that there's a, a past due balance and that if you do not pay within three days, then they have the legal, the legal permission to get the legal proceedings started, right? The actual eviction. I want to remind you that these are just notices. These are not eviction notices. There's nothing that goes on your record. This is just a notice to let you know that they intend on doing something else should there not be any performance within that period of time. So in this particular instance, it's a three-day notice to pay or quit. If you do not pay within three days, and those are usually business days, they do not include holidays and weekends, then they have the legal right to proceed with what's called an unlawful detainer, which is the legal eviction process. But you have three-day notices to address any of the issues that they state. The second three-day notice is a three-day notice to cure or quit. This is typically issued when there is some sort of violation of the lease agreements or some sort of clause or something that is being done that either the owners or the property management wants you to rectify, to correct, to cure. And so they're giving you three days notices to cure whatever the issues are that's stated on the notice. And if not, then they can start the legal proceedings of eviction. And the last three day notice is the three day notice to terminate. These notices are usually given when there is a gross violation of one of the terms of the lease. Usually, for example, if there is illegal activity on the property, you might be issued a three day notice to terminate. If there's uh, situations, for example, surrounding domestic violence, uh, the, the perpetrator is going to be asked to terminate. Uh, mostly there are definitely protections for tenants that are survivors of domestic violence uh, that you should definitely look into if you're, if you're in that type of situation. So those are the three different types of three-day notices that you might receive. It's really important to review the notice to see exactly what is being stated. And we also highly recommend that you respond to the notice if you believe that it is a faulty notice, an insufficient notice, invalid, or it's just otherwise not true. You should reply as quickly as possible 
We usually recommend that you reply in some sort of form of writing, but with a three day notice, it's kind of tough to get it in writing and sent to the owner and the property management company. So it's okay to respond verbally via text or email, and then follow up the conversation with an actual letter that you can send through certified mail so that you have the documented proof that that conversation took place. Always really important to respond to those notices as soon as possible. Okay, so that'll take care of the three-day notices. The other notices that we wanted to cover today were the 24-hour notices to enter because these are notices that are usually issued a lot more frequently and are more common. So first of all, what's important to know on 24-hour notices is that it needs to be a full 24-hour notice. So if the notice was issued at 9 p.m., then that means that they cannot enter until the following day for a full 24 hour notice. If the notice was issued, say for example, at 6 p.m. for the next day, they cannot enter because it's not a full 24 hour notice. So a 24 hour notice needs to be in writing. It has to be delivered properly to you, usually to you in person or posted on your door. Sometimes it can be mailed out in the mail and it just needs to be mailed out six days prior to when they intend to enter the premises. So again, has to be in writing and has to be delivered properly, has to be a full 24 hour notice. And they're only allowed to enter your premises during normal business hours. So that's typically Monday through Friday from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And those are the only times that they're really supposed to be entering the, the unit or the rental unit or whichever it is that you're occupying. So it has to be during normal business hours. And the owners and the property managers cannot abuse this right of 24 hour notice to enter and they cannot use it to harass you as well. So that's really important to know. Now you can always let the property owners or the property managers in as long as you give them permission. So if they don't give you 24 hour notice, but come knocking at your door and you let them in, that's giving them permission, but you do not have to allow them to enter your property if they didn't give you a full 24 hour notice. And you're within your right to do that. The other important thing to know is that they can only enter your property for very specific reasons. And one of those reasons is in case of an emergency. There's a fire, plumbing is busted, and it's uh, flooding the apartment, things of that nature that they have to enter into the apartment very quickly. They can do this so if it's an emergency. The other reason that they can enter is if you requested repairs and they're entering the unit in order to do those requested or necessary repairs. Uh, and again, it has to be a 24 hour notice. And if you've requested repairs and they give you 24 hour notice, we definitely recommend to allow them to enter the property, even though you're not there present. If you have to go to work or you have to run other errands, you do not have to be physically in the unit for them to enter and to do those repairs, if, especially if you've requested them. The other reason that they can enter the unit is if they're going to be showing the property to prospective buyers, prospective tenants, or if they have to invite, for example, any workers or contractors to come in and inspect the unit in order to do the repairs that were requested, or if they're going to be selling or leasing the property after your tenancy. So they have to still let you know that they intend to enter the property. And for prospective buyers and prospective uh, tenants, if they, if they let you know that they're going to be selling the property within 120 days, then that, uh, verbal, that notice can be a verbal notice. It doesn't have to be a written notice. If they've written you 120 days, letting you know that they're going to be selling the property and they're going to be showing it to prospective buyers, then they can only request a verbal permission to enter into the property, but it still has to be a full 24 hours notice. And the other reason and the last reason that they can enter the property is for them to do inspections related to your security deposit. So if you're doing a move out inspection, they can enter the property to do the move out inspection. If you're moving in to a property and they're doing a move in inspection, they can enter the property to do the move in inspection. They cannot enter your property just because they want to do uh, 
quote unquote an inspection or take photos or any other reasons than the ones that we've listed here unless you have authorized and given them permission to do so. That's really, really important to know. So to recap, we covered the three different types of three-day notices, the notice to pay or quit, the notice to cure or quit, or the notice to terminate. And then we also covered 24-hour notices. They should be in writing, should be a full 24-hour notice, and they can only enter your property for very specific reasons. So that'll do it for your tenant tip this week. Thank you so very much for watching. Again, remember to subscribe to our channel, click the bell notification to be notified of any new videos that we have coming out. And remember, we are better together, we are stronger together. Thank you so very much for watching. We'll see you next time.